Yeah. Maybe you can we would like you to <laughs> share with us a little bit of what happened. Yeah. Can I can yeah, start? Sure, of course. Course. Because it was a happy coincidence because I'm uh, I'm writing right now an article about the F1 insights mm -hmm. and well uh, the Formula One insights yes. that was born the on the show. One. Yes, it's, awesome. it's amazing. It's an it's amazing application. <laughs> and well, we had to, yesterday the the presentation of the uh, Ross Brown. But what I like to know uh, other informations about, uh, for example, how uh, when the the, the this, this application start to work in Formula One probably next season or 2020 and which kind which kind of data uh, the, the 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 solution can can use to, to transform and uh, it's statistics for the viewers so uh, i can't speak on behalf of formula one unfortunately uh -huh. here okay. because that's something which of course we mm -hmm. would need to set up with ross and the, and the guys uh -huh. because that's not something where i can go and publicly reference uh -huh. and i don't have enough okay. insight for this okay. i can tell you how how that work in principle, I can give you a similar example, Perfect. but I think because um, of all of the uh, intricacies, so that's something we will need to check then no with the Formula problem. One. There's no like, problem. Is that okay? Okay. So perfect. I know it's very interesting and people were asking <coughs> you guys. Yeah, the guys. We just we need, we need to be custom obsessed here and also do what the customer then wants. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> but, okay. but the concept is the same, so yeah. that will yeah. be very useful. So I mean, so I can I can tell you, so if you like the red Formula One cars, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how about really red big buses? So, um, it, because it's similar to the situation um, in London, the um, the electrified big red buses now mm -hmm. um, are actually powered by a company called Vantage Power. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a English company, a UK company, um, which is using now IO, IoT technology to do something which is very similar than Formula One, mm -hmm. but in a very different context. Okay. So what they figured out was, of course, you know, the, one of the biggest problems is we have a lot of pollution, and one of the biggest contributor to pollution is these really big heavy-duty vehicles like buses or anything. Mm -hmm. and the mission of Vantage was okay, can we electrify all of them? Mm -hmm. And they figured out it's very new technology. I mean, you buy these, whether it's not trolleys or these big buses, mm -hmm. they work pretty well in the beginning, but very often they start failing over time. It's not yet so much proven technology. Mm -hmm. So what they wanted to figure out, how can we prevent this? And they were using AWS IoT mm -hmm. and then IoT Analytics, and I can tell you a little bit more about our services and something called IoT Greengrass. Mm -hmm. They ingested a trillion data points that they had, a trillion, mm -hmm. that was just something they could measure, and they used then Amazon SageMaker, which mm -hmm. is our machine learning mm -hmm. and they got a model and what they were able now to do they use this machine learning and they can put this now onto a local device in the bus and there's technology we call AWS IoT green grass mm -hmm. and that can now do the local inferencing and what happens now they are now able to predict where within the big battery of a bus mm -hmm. whether there's one cell which is going to fail a month in advance and that was, and what that means is, you never know whether the one cell when it goes down just means a little less power, or whether it means the bus falls down. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you know this a month in advance, they can now say, okay, we detected something. Why don't we schedule a dedicated downtime where when you're in the depot, you come and check everything because then you don't have interruption. Mm -hmm. And that was just an amazing mm -hmm. use case where you see just. Why would you do all of this? So the, the use case is very simple. I want reliable functioning buses mm -hmm. because the impact could be significant if they fall down in a lot of cost. Mm -hmm. And the data is collected anyway. Why don't feed it in a machine learning model, get it back locally to figure out what's wrong, do this constantly and then can tell this. And what was most amazing, they said, hey, well, we don't not only put this for the batteries, they use the same technology now for a belt system. And, and the belt system is um, in all of these buses. They apparently they have these belt systems um, which they use for for building pressure for the pressure pumps for the for the brakes. Mm -hmm. And when the brakes don't work, it's also not good mm -hmm. for a bus. And mm -hmm. there apparently they could tell three to four months in advance if something happens to the belt system. I didn't even know that's possible. So, and again, it's the same technology whether you now have in Formula One in the cars, measure all of this, and then do some local processing or send it in the cloud. The same was here. They measure this all of the buses, send it in the cloud, do the machine learning, put the models back, and now they can do it individually what's happening with these buses and do then certain business outcomes for them. The business outcomes was warn it, repair it before it happens. Mm -hmm. Significant amount of savings. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So it's not a Formula One example, but it's a red car. It's a red car. It's a red car. It's a <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it helped. <laughs> And Alex Shai, who is the CEO, mm -hmm. he was with me on stage yesterday when we announced a little bit more detail the leadership session. So you should talk to him. Alex Shai, great guy. I mean, as I was I was blown away what these guys can do with this technology. I will. And Dick, um, 
in, in, the, in the public sector, uh, not, not Latin America, we, we, unfortunately we're still starting using this technology, but we will, probably will evolve about. But in, in Europe, mostly in Europe, for example, or in the US, uh, in the public sector, uh, how the uh, IoT is, uh, is using actually, uh, in, in, the, in the kind of, which kind of service? Oh, IoT has multiple applications in the public sector, because in the public sector there is tons of, we can start from the utilities, whether you talk about water leakage detection. Mm -hmm. There's still an enormous percentage of water which is just lost because you have holes in the system. Mm -hmm. Just again, and how do you figure that one out normally? Because somebody is giving a phone call, either saying, I don't have water, or you see something building up a lake in the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. So just if you just figure out you have small little sensors every now and then on the lines which can just acoustically figure out mm -hmm. if something getting wrong. Mm -hmm. So that again, if something happens, you can dispatch people going out. Or then you go, so that is something which we, we see across all the water distribution systems. Same gets with electricity, optimization of electricity or electricity theft. Mm -hmm. um, theft of electricity worldwide, and that's not necessarily in the United States, but in other countries as well, is a major issue. So mm -hmm. how do you figure out that somebody's actually stealing electricity? How can you monitor this? It's yet a very big for the utilitarian companies. Mm -hmm. Another one is for garbage, garbage collection. I don't know, in the United States still, every week mm -hmm. the garbage yeah. can is empty. So, but you know, we have a Brazilian yeah. case on garbage collection in really? Recife, I guess. Yeah. Oh, cool. exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and Where is that? Recife is the northwest of Brazil. Oh. Because it's small. It, it, yeah, it's a bit small. So we have done in some of the bigger cities, that if, if you put a small sensor, it would be so much more efficient. A, if it's full, why not come after two days? And if it's empty, why not wait three weeks mm -hmm. instead of just running around? So there are many of this. And then we talk about parting, parking optimization, lightning optimization. We have customers mm -hmm. um, which now build the lightning system, LED system, whether this is Philips Lightning, mm -hmm. or whether this is light on, whether they put them and then you optimize again, bad energy savings, massive amount of, of, uh, of, of of, uh, of savings for the municipality. So typically what it is, you have to pay a lot for giving service, mm -hmm. water, electricity, garbage, lightning. Can I do this in a much more efficient way? Because what is most important for municipalities is great service for your citizens, mm -hmm. but ideally at a better quality and at a lower cost. And I, IoT is delivering massively on those. So this, this is, I mean, that's the obvious example. And then you can think about other things like parking optimization, security, we, we work with the um, gunshot detection, which is maybe more a US problem, mm -hmm. that you figure out, okay, did something happening just acoustically mm -hmm. so that you can then have the idea if you detect something and then the first responders. So can you then put up the lightning that they know where to go and how to block um, the traffic? Mm -hmm. And all of that is, of course, IoT applications. So there are many of those applications, some of them more intuitively understandable and sometimes maybe more intricately going into the real problems of municipalities. Mm -hmm. And well, but in the, can you give me an example that how much, for example, in the electricity or or water, like uh, how much uh, a government can, a public sector for determinate country can save in money using IoT solutions? So we should we should go back to. Teresa, we have a public sector team mm -hmm. who can give you all the stats. I don't have the stats in my head, but we should Maybe go back. Maybe Jeff can help you. No, we will, no we, yeah. can, we will get this okay. directly after you. So we have, I have a dedicated public sector team in IoT mm -hmm. because they can give you the exact numbers for a specific implementation or overall. But overall, I believe in the world, it's more than 10% of all water is lost. And you talk about billions of dollars, True. billions of gallons. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have just, just even on a smaller scale, I mean, a company like Rakio, which is a professional sprinkler systems, they were just optimizing also the water for watering, and they were able to do millions and millions of gallons per month mm -hmm. just by doing our smart watering, just as one company. Mm -hmm. So you imagine this at the level of, of, of cities or of countries, mm -hmm. but the public sector team should be able to give you some statistics there. You should follow up with this place. Okay. How far are we from smart cities? That depends on the city. Yeah, I'm so sorry. In Latin America, I don't know if you know some examples or in general vision. So, I mean, that depends on the city. Okay. It's unfortunately the, the, the right answer. So there are right. some of the cities in the world which are extremely advanced because they put a lot of effort, whether they're in the Middle East. I mean, we have some Middle Eastern come, come, uh, cities which are really advanced. Or you, when you go to Singapore as well, mm -hmm. um, and some in the UK, some in the United States. But it's not that it's... Is it a matter of technology? It's much more a matter of policy investment in which city is able to put this together. 
-hmm. because sometimes a city is not just under one government mm -hmm. or one municipality because you might have a federal government you might have different areas so the the promise of a fully um, smart city is most of the time not a technology issue it's much more a human agency interaction Mm -hmm. uh, that is, there's a very different area. If you're more interested in the public sector, then I think you should really have somebody from the public sector team because they can give you some of those insights. Now, I only know that generically. Mm -hmm. I would love to be a little more specific. Then we need to have somebody from the public but sector. But technically, team. we are all covered, right? Technically, I mean, it's, techni it's, it's another talent. So, uh, I mean, most people ask me, what's the biggest impediment for IoT? Which technology do we need? I'm saying is most of the technology is there. The biggest impediment is the companies and the people need to have the culture to adopt it. Yes. Because it's not necessarily easy to understand how you do it, mm -hmm. even though it's there. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a great example. In the past, if you are a company who was building something, mm -hmm. a, 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 yeah, you make a hardware, you have a development, so it's a product unit. They're responsible for designing and creating a product. Mm -hmm. Then you have a manufacturing unit which is responsible for manufacturing and then you have an IT unit for IT. In mm -hmm. IoT, these boundaries doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. because the development unit can do its own IT and has an impact on how it's manufactured. So the OT, um, which is a very different system, which is typically 20, 30, 40 years old sometimes, is a very different beast than the IT equipment and what you can now do with modern IoT technology which can connect it all, to, all through the place. Mm -hmm. I don't know, have you seen um, have you been in Werner's keynote this morning? Werner yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you saw the Fender use case? Yes. You remember yeah. Fender? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even a company which is doing almost everything manually with very old machines for wood processing now can take benefit of IoT. So you could not argue you need to be a modern technology company with the latest and greatest machines. Fender just had the culture in saying is we want to do this. So with very simple means of small sensors, even the button, you can optimize the production flow in your factory and you have much better quality control. So it is about the culture. So it's not I need to buy a new machine. No, you don't. You need to instrument your machine. And you can do this sometimes in very simple terms. It's just do I want it? Am I able to do this? Mm -hmm. And I'm accepting what is the potential outcome, and I'm ready to do it. So it's much more a cultural exercise than it is a technological exercise. Same for smart cities. Well. So what do you think would be the first step for a company that maybe want to in, uh, like make uh, IoT, like design IoT, but don't know how to do it or where to do it? Or so, so what, what, what we have worked pretty well with, with companies who come with us, and because in the beginning people had your question said, I've heard about this IoT thing, sounds great, but I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. That's not a good starting point. Mm -hmm. So what we typically did at saying is, tell me more about your challenges. So what's wrong? Do you do, do, you do yeah. manufacturing? Yeah. Something which is really a pain in the neck in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Or what would you like to know about your customers? Or do you have any issues with your product? Because then you start to talk about a real problem. And when you talk about a real problem, then you can figure out, okay, could this technology help? Mm -hmm. For example, if you produce, I'm using Bayer now. Bayer, I don't know, one of the biggest um, crop um, handlers in the world. They educated us and were saying is that 13% of all food is actually lost in the factories. Mm -hmm. It's not on the field, it's not on the shelf, it's not at home. And that is $750 billion every year. And that saying is, <coughs> it's not that the machine is bad, Is how can I optimize my food processing if I understand the type of crop that comes in at any given point in time and what happens. And that is not something which you have been able to do in the past because now you want to have this information coming from the different machine into one data lake. You can see this and you can make decisions and then optimize across your entire value chain. Mm -hmm. It's a very standard example. But that was, my problem was, I lose a lot of crop which I have to throw away. That's my problem. How can I do this better? Mm -hmm. Or you have a device like, um, have you heard about iRobot? Yes. You know these vacuum cleaners? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're Roomba. saying, okay, you have this Roomba. The first Roombas you might have seen, they were a little bit dumb. They were just like, mm -hmm. go like this, yeah. random. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the latest Roombas? Yeah, it's like that. They get better and better over time. The more you <laughs> use them, the better they get. So these machines get better over time. And why this? Because they collect this information and learn. And again, that's when you said, okay, this takes too long to low battery. What if I could learn? What mm -hmm. if I can understand? So you try and figure out with a company what is your problem, and then you can work backwards and see what can technology do for you. 
it's a much better approach than things. I heard about IoT and AI. Mm -hmm. how, like the problem was with Vantex saying is these buses break down. Mm -hmm. So my problem was how can I predict if something in the battery goes wrong? Can I take all the measurements of all of the cons of all of the curves that I have saved in the past, feed a non-algorithmic method, but mm -hmm. a machine learning method to find patterns that a human being can't and try it out and apply. Guess that was the result. So that is where you come. You have a dedicated problem. Mm -hmm. And then you said, okay, if I knew the state of all of those things, could I use that to optimize something mm -hmm. or build a new product? That's a much better approach. So you start with a real problem, you work backwards, and then sometimes you just have to dare and try. Because if you haven't done it before, you don't know how difficult or easy it is. Mm -hmm. Did that answer the question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in in the case when you when in the, talking about private sector, when you uh, new when, when when AWS goes to offer a solution of IoT for a company, uh, of course, uh, most part of com which uh, which kind of skills this company gives to oh I don't know if I, if I, my my company is ready to adopt this IoT or costs or I don't oh, have people oh, qualified to depends depends we have companies who are. All in. I mean, and again, it also doesn't depend. It doesn't. It does not depend on the sector. Mm -hmm. It does not depend on the size of the companies. Mm -hmm. I have companies really big. I mean, like like Phillips, mm -hmm. in, in a very traditional uh, medical environment, who said, "Okay, we built a complete new platform on IoT on AWS. It's a health suite digital platform. They started three years ago. Phillips. Then you have medical companies who are far behind. Then you have small little startups who are really great, and then build something completely new." And then, like module, we build safety belts which you put around the workers mm -hmm. so that they can detect no movement and figure out, okay, is there a danger? Because all oh, these movements, most likely you work with a forklift, and if you then know where the forklift is, you need a distance because there are still hundreds of people who die every year because of forklift accidents mm -hmm. in the US alone. So, again, that was products which weren't useful there. So, it is really depending on on the people and the culture. Mm -hmm. So, and I've seen all, some mm -hmm. of saying they want to immediately jump in and maybe too yeah. blue-eyed and want to solve everything and they say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, let's figure out what is the real problem and make the first step to understand that you really see how it works. Mm -hmm. And others are saying, no, that's not secure, and it's not workable and it will never work. Mm -hmm. And then you need to overcome the hurdle and say, okay, tell me more. Why are you afraid? Or what's your problem with security? Or why don't you think it will work? And then you can start and work with them slowly because it's difficult. It's not an easy thing which is intuitive. Mm -hmm. Why does the machine decide if it's an ML? Nobody can tell. It's a neural network. So why would I trust it then? Mm -hmm. That alone. How am I sure that the data is actually the real data? How do I get the integrity? And then you work through the technical solution and explain this. And then typically you get people on the path. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's getting more and more. I think more and more people don't, like in the beginning with the cloud, people oh, well, when the part, now everybody's not talking, shall I go to the cloud? It's more when am I in the mm -hmm. cloud? With IoT, it's not should I do IoT? It's when and for which use cases do I start? So it's, it's, it's a similar thing. It's just, it was a new technology and then it takes a little bit of time to, to understand. Mm -hmm. And the, in the implementation of the solutions of IoT, still uh, find uh, barriers with the poly security policies of this company, the, the, policy, the security of information of this company. Is still, uh, this, is, this, this kind of problems still exist in the company when you have to make an implementation? It depends. It depends. For example, all of our services now, they are, um, of course, uh, we put all of the same scrutiny for security. For example, my service also HIPAA compliant. So if you said you need certain regulation, mm -hmm. you need certain certification. So in the medical space, I'm just using HIPAA because it's highly regulated. Mm -hmm. And saying is our services now, IoT Core and Amazon Free Artisan being done, they are HIPAA certified. HIPAA is the healthy one, right? That's the health certification that you need. And then uh, uh, when you go into the public sector more, then it's FedRAMP. And then we say, do you have FedRAMP compliant? So that means you have things like compliance, which give them the companies an understanding that it was actually audited so a panel of books. Mm -hmm. And then we have, of course, all of the other security elements. And then you can say, me as a company, I just want a certain security because my IT network works like this. I want to have certain ports open, others not. So it really depends on the company. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we certify, we build our service to high security standards. We are very transparent how they work. We explain this to our customers. Wherever we can get certified, we are certified. And that typically helps. And then again, Somebody says, I need to do this after a firewall, then of course you build a VPC and they do it within a VPC. VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. 
just it's like a private cloud for you because nobody else can get access. Mm-hmm. So there are many methods, or you have something like a direct connect. Mm-hmm. It's another offer from AWS. But it's almost like a leased line from your company to the cloud, which is not public. Mm-hmm. So if you're an enterprise who has very stringent security requirements, mm-hmm. fulfill them now with technology and with software so that your security requirements are met. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. What else? Do you understand what we launched? Do you have any idea? Do you like any of the services? Have you heard about the awesomeness about um, SageMaker Neo, about our new machine learning, how this works on our devices? Have you heard about Sidewise, which we launched, which is a, a new service that you get all of the software out, the, the data out of the factory? Mm-hmm. Or ThingsGraph, how everybody can now build um, applications with drag and drop. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about this at all? No? We should check you the PR. We launched, we launched four significant services in IoT, which are really significant, make a really big difference. Let me just give you two if you like. Is that okay? Sure. Yes. So one of them that I think is really interesting, we built a tiny little piece of software which is called IoT Things Graph. Mm-hmm. And if you build an IoT application, mm-hmm. typically you need a lot of different devices from different manufacturers. They need to work together and it's a lot of hassle to understand all the protocols and write it together. We launched a service, it's called IoT Things Graph. Mm-hmm. where you can have a graphical user interface, mm-hmm. where you have things and services as models. Think about like boxes that you drag and drop, put them together in a flow, and with a click you can deploy them and make them work. That's how much it goes. It's almost no code or no code. Mm-hmm. Give you a great example of what they were using this for. Have you seen these electro scooters? Do you know these electro scooters? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go, and it's a big, big thing in the United States and the West Coast. Well, no, you know yeah. what is one in of Brazil the big, as well, yeah. you know what is one of the biggest problem when you start using electro scooters when a company gets for out? the user for the company. Well, the big, the for biggest, both most likely. Both but do you know what one is the biggest problem? I didn't know. Do you know uh, what the rich, biggest problem? the battery. No. Park. The they get stolen. Oh, yeah. They put them out. Great electric scooters in San Francisco in two weeks. Two hundred scooters gone. All of them gone. People just steal them, and they're saying is so you can't even use them because they get stored. Yeah, but the, for example, I, I, I give you this. Just, I just okay, give you the sorry, example. Sorry. So for ThingsGraph, so okay. now one of the companies, Onika, mm-hmm. which announced their titanium Iotanium, which I think Sunday, you can look them up. Platform, they power almost all of these scooters in the United States, and they said now they use ThingsGraph. They're saying it's very simple. Um, uh, 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 um, and, uh, they use uh, events saying is that's another service I wanted to use for saying they're saying is okay I wanted to use something what if this scooter is now moving three meters and it's not in a state that is rented and within 60 seconds it's not coming back most likely something is wrong and I want this for every scooter so tens of thousands of times they were using another service now which is called IoT mm-hmm. events because now you can build these events and get this out so this is the type of service about things graph is used by a company called Xcube Labs. They were saying in India, I mean, you come now from South America. I don't know whether we have the same problem in South America, but in India, there's every now and then power outages. Do you lose power every now and then? Mm-hmm. In India, they lose a lot of power. Oh, in Brazil? Yeah, and, and, and then they have these cell towers for your mobiles, and then they don't work. So they have this, next to the cell towers, mm-hmm. they have these diesel engines which power the cell towers. Oh, yeah. But unfortunately in India, the power outage is sometimes very long, and then there's no more diesel, and it still doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So the company Xcube Labs, they built a small little application with things graph, they said, figure out whether the diesel is empty, when it gets empty, send an SMS to the government, they come with diesel, and they need to find, <laughs> and they need to find which of the tower, just have a light which blinks, oh, that's where I need to go. And, and if they had to build this for every single tower, which is different, different light, they would have to write code for all of them. They use ThingsGraph now, they built this as an application, the click of a button, and then you can deploy it locally because it needs to run locally in all of the cell towers. That's how you do ThingsGraph. So it, we now built, Applica- we built now services which makes it much more easy to build applications, which makes it more understandable how to use the data. And Sitewise was the other um, that we had, which is more an industrial application, how to get data out, which Bayer was not using. So the, the example I gave you for Bayer, mm-hmm. for optimizing their crop processing, they use now AWS IoT Sitewise mm-hmm. for really optimizing their crop processing in the factories. Mm-hmm. And the last thing, that's just I wanted to give you because I really love that. That's the tech guy. <laughs> um, you have heard about all of this machine learning stuff, yeah? yeah, yeah. And you have heard about Amazon SageMaker. Yes. And um, we use the term machine learning. Yeah, machine learning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Machine learning is actually a really bad term because have you ever seen a machine learn anything? 
I have never seen a machine learn anything. The machine is dumb. The cloud learns because you need a lot of compute to learn. That was what was called building the model. Mm -hmm. But then when Andy showed you the other cycle, inferencing, using a model, and then predicting, that a small machine can do. So we built technology that you can now train in the cloud with a lot of computer model, and with one click, you can use that model and bring it down on a machine. That is the green grass ML inferencing feature. And now, even if there's no connectivity, you can now make local decisions. For example, have you seen the racer that we launched? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does the racer can do local machine learning? That's exactly our IoT technology. So the models from SageMaker are then deployed onto this thing via green grass and executed because they are not necessarily connected anymore. So this is now making the circle so that you can really make machines smarter over time. And we launched a tiny little service in SageMaker is called Amazon SageMaker Neo, mm -hmm. which has now so-called a deep learning compiler, which is now using this machine learning model and shrinking it 100 times, making it much smaller. And by doing it much smaller, you can now put it on much cheaper devices, not expensive $300 devices, maybe on a $30 device. And it also is faster than you can have a cheaper processor, which is not as powerful. And now you can have many more times of devices who can do the same thing. And that's also something which we launched Monday, which is Amazon SageMaker Neo, deep learning compiler, and the new version of Greengrass now has the deep learning runtime that that automatically works. It's a little bit technology work, but it's massive impact if you really want to have all of these machines making smart decisions by themselves. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to share that with you because I believe it's exciting news that we had. And sometimes it gets drowned by all of this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, how many lunches did you have this week? More than a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had myself six. Yeah, yeah. just <laughs> IoT services six. I just explained four to you. I hope that was okay. So. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh. Uh, what are your most creative projects that you have implemented in the, since you started working with the IoT? The project that you are, okay, this is very creative. This is, I'm proud of this project. I think one of the most creative. I I, I'm proud of all of my children. Oh, of course, sure, of sure, no problem. And sometimes you say... Everybody has a favorite. But no, I don't have a favorite, but I think the most interesting one was actually AWS Greengrass, mm -hmm. because that gave now the IoT cloud functionality locally on a device without internet connectivity. And you could always do embedded software, means somebody wrote code. But now you can write an application the same way for the cloud, then for the edge, and with a click of a button, you can do machine learning and bring it down. That was actually a significant part. And that is when this edge computing, we, we did this two and a half years ago, and then if there, we never really look at competition, we always, always look at our, at our customers, but if every other competition then copies you a year later, maybe you invented something which wasn't too stupid. And that happened. Now all of the big cloud providers have a similar thing a year and a half later saying, is, yeah. Maybe it was a good idea that we had. So if you like, that's every now and then nice to see. All right. Thank All right. you very much.